Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. As you know, in recent episodes, I have been building a R package that I'm calling Phylotyper for classifying 16S rRNA gene sequences. Of course, if you don't know what that means, you will still get a lot out of these episodes because what is most important is thinking through the process of developing a package. In today's episode, I am going to be building out a vignette which will help demonstrate to my future users how to use Phylotyper to classify their own sequences. Now, if you've been following along, you know that I have a vignette file in my benchmarking directory that I have been using to kind of think about how one might go about using uh, the, the functions within my package. And so I wanna formalize that to make it a legit vignette. Before we do that though, we have to do some housekeeping, cleaning up from some recent episodes where I was playing around with where to store data that we might use as a reference for our classification. As always, if you wanna get the code that I am working with, down below in the description, there's a link to the repository for this project on GitHub, both at the beginning of the episode, right now, <laughs> as well as at the end of the episode. So you can go browse the files and see what changed. To kind of orient ourselves, if we go into that benchmarking directory, I've got this vignette.r script that has a sequence, it's got some parameters, got information on loading the database, um, getting a consensus sequence, filtering that, and then printing out the taxonomy. So it's got a variety of functions that one might use to classify their sequences. In here, I was assuming that a person might read in um, the trainset 19 underscore DF database. Now that's something that we made, I think, two or three episodes ago. And what I found was that that was actually pretty big and that what I'd rather do is make that train set 19 part of its own package. What I wanna do first today is to alter this so that instead of train set 19, we go back a while and I think it's gonna be train set nine that we use, which is the first version that Mother, uh, another tool that I've developed, used for classifying sequences. It's a fair bit smaller and has served pretty well for doing uh, tutorials and demonstrations, kind of like what I wanna show here in the vignette. Let's go back into our directory here, and we'll come to our R directory. And then in the data.r script, we have the code that we made for uh, building the version 19 training set, as well as the process database. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'll come to the code that we had that we developed in the last episode for train set 19 to build that R package. And so you'll recall that um, in data raw, I had train set dot R, right? So there's that. And then also in the R directory, we had data dot R. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy all of this from data dot R and paste it into my data dot R from Phylotyper. And then we'll also need here to go back to data hyphen raw. Again, this is within Phylotyper. And I'm gonna open up trainset 19.r and then coming back to the trainset 19 um, package, go to trainset r. I'm gonna go ahead and copy everything here. And then I will paste that into here. And we're gonna to have to do some updating here. But what I wanna do is go ahead and save these. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename trainset 19.r. And so what I find is often easier to do is to do it through the terminal. So I'll go ahead and open up a terminal and we'll then go ahead and do git mv. And then again, this is in data raw trainset 19.r. And we'll do data raw trainset.r. Okay. And so that will rename this file. So it, yes, it tells me it's been deleted. Do I want to close that? Yes. And so I'll then uh, let's go ahead and refresh this because it looks like there's two copies there, but there's really only one. We now have the script for uh, loading the data. Um, from a website. And so here we're again using that train set 19. That's not the version I want. Again, I want the train set nine. Coming over to the mother wiki, um, I have a directory here for RDP reference files. And if you go to the very bottom of this, so I see I've actually got version six. The version in the MySeq SOP is version nine, which is a few versions um, newer <laughs> um, than train set six. Um, I think I might roll with train set nine since that's what I use in the MySeq SOP and it's something that I'm kind of familiar with. Um, so we'll go ahead and use that. So if I hover over this link for the 16S rRNA reference RDP, 
In the lower left corner, I see the URL for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that link address. And then coming over to my trainset.r, the first one was for the RDP. I'll go ahead and paste that in. And so wherever I have, um, oh, and I think I need a quote at the end. Yep, okay. And so now wherever I have this train set 19, 072023, I'm gonna find that and I'm gonna replace it with this train set nine version. Okay, and so I'll replace all cases of that. So that replaced 13 cases. The other thing I'll double check is whether I still have any cases of train set 19 RDP. And I do, that's ultimately what I call the object that we're exporting, okay? And so then I'm gonna change that to be train set nine RDP, replace all of those, okay? And then if we look at any other remaining cases of train set 19, it's gonna be the PDS for sure, right? So this is gonna to go to train set nine, and let's look for any others. Yep, there's another here, here, and here. And so let's, again, redo our search to make sure we got everything. Oh, and there's one here I didn't get. All right, I think I heard you tell me that. <laughs> all right, good. So that should all be updated now. And I will then go ahead and run this code. And again, what it should be doing is downloading the version nine of the RDP training set into a temporary directory as shown here. We do some modification. Um, actually, one thing I notice is that I'm doing an untar, and probably what I mean to do here is an unzip. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Let's see what happens and, and we'll go from there, okay? So let's go ahead and run each of these lines. All right, so that downloaded it. What do you know? That untarred it. I wonder if that actually worked. Uh, and if we look at fast A, it's empty. So no, it didn't work. So I think what we want to do instead of untar is unzip. And then we can do something like list files on tempdir. And so there we see our train set nine files. So I'm noticing that it put the .tax and .fasta files into the temp directory. And so I don't think this is what we actually want. So let's go ahead and double check. So let's go ahead and remove this directory that I previously had it going into. We don't need that paste. And so let's then see if this works with the list files. That works, that gets us the right directory. And so we want the same thing here, but instead of fast A, we want dot tax. Okay, and so we get fast A, cool, taxonomy, cool. All right, and then we can uh, read those in, read fast A, read taxonomy, but that requires us to have Philotyper installed because we use those functions from Philotyper, all right? And it tells me that it didn't actually um, reinstall it because I have the most recent version already installed. So again, we'll come back down to this read fast A and the read taxonomy, and then we can go ahead and join these together. This does assume that we have dplyr installed. So we'll then use use data from the use this package to take our train set nine underscore RDP and store that as the output or the exported data file, and we're compressing it using the XZ um, compression algorithm. I talked about this again um, an episode or two ago. Okay, so now what we wanna do is the PDS. And so the thing we have to change is this untar to unzip. And we'll go ahead and run all these and make sure they all work. It's complaining that that wasn't found, and that's because I didn't change this to be zip. Okay, so this needs to be zip. Let's try that again. Cool, it downloaded this time. And let's see, if you look at taxonomy, that is empty, and why is it empty? Ah, because I need to change this stuff. So you'll recall in the last episode, I encouraged you all to see if you could make a function, a single function to do this, because clearly my copying and pasting isn't working. Uh, and so this again is an illustration of why we wanna keep our code dry, which is an acronym for don't repeat yourself. So I'm clearly repeating myself and then not updating myself <laughs> um, whenever something changes. So now again, if we look at fast day, uh, that's good. Um, although it's got two values in there. Why does it have two values in there? Oh, it's got two values. I see one's PDS and one's RDP. Uh, and so that's important to know because I'm gonna want this to be say PDS.fastA and for this to be PDS.tax because otherwise it's going to list both of those as we saw, right? So again, now if we do fast A, 
we get the PDS version. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify that further up here um, to have this be rdp.fasta and have this be rdp.tax. All right, so I'll rerun these to make sure everything works. So now we have both the PDS and the RDP version of this training set nine. Again, the difference between PDS and RDP is that the RDP only has bacterial sequences. And so it didn't have mitochondria. It didn't have, I don't think it had chloroplasts and it didn't have 18S. And so um, my PDS version, PDS are my initials, uh, was when I added in extra sequences to make it easier to detect whether or not a sequence that someone might have generated was from you know, a chloroplast, a mitochondria, or a eukaryote. So that should be good. Now we'll come back to data.r, and we'll again want to update this. So again, we had this, this train set 19, and we're going to replace it with train set 903, uh, and what was it? I think it was 2012. I'll just, I'll go ahead and copy this, and then paste it in here and we'll replace all, go ahead and save that. And then you'll recall that this is now a train set nine RDP and train set nine PDS. I'll go ahead and change this. And so one thing you'll remember perhaps is this RD name flag from Roxygen allows us to take the documentation from another data source or another function and use it uh, for this data, okay? So now I need to update all this other stuff to make it for version nine. So I'll go ahead and make that training set version nine. Um, and so then this was from September uh, 2012, good. And so I've got numbers in here that need to be updated. And so back here in my documentation, I see that I had uh, 9,665 bacterial and 384 archaeal sequences. And so I'll place this in here. Oh, and I grabbed, left that two there accidentally. And let's go ahead and reflow the comment. So if I can remember how to do that, yes. In my Mac, it's shift control forward slash. Very good. And so that again was, uh, this was what I added and then the PDS version. Again, added extra eukaryotic sequences, including chloroplast and mitochondria. And so down here, uh, we see, yeah, that there are 19 of those sequences. And I'll say, I'll just add 119 chloroplast mitochondria. And so that's going to be, let's use R to do the math for us. So we'll do 9665 plus 384 plus 119, and we get 10168. Okay, so it's, so it's about half the size of train set 19, and that should be good. And yeah, um, you know, perhaps in the future, I would like to give a shout out to the other database packages. So I think something I'll add in here also is be sure to see the mother GitHub project for repositories to obtain R packages containing other taxonomic reference data. Okay. And maybe what I'll do is then add a URL here using Markdown. And again, coming in here, we could then do github.com uh, forward slash mother. And so this is the mother GitHub account. And you'll see down here that we have train set 19. So I'll go ahead and grab that, plop that in here. And so then here I'll say, for example, uh, version 19 of this reference is train set 19 package is the train set 19 package and we'll add the url for that again adding documentation really helps improve the usability of our own package so we'll go ahead and plop that in here at a period i think i have a misspelling repositories no i think that's spelled right and we'll then go ahead and do our shortcut on the keyboard which was shift command forward slash that gets that to reflow nicely um, Hopefully that works. I'm a little worried that breaking this URL across the line won't work. You know what, I'm not even gonna risk it. I'll put that there. All right, um, so that should be good. And um, actually the other thing I need to change here um, is this other information for description of how mother formatted files were generated. Um, I don't have that actually for the earlier versions. 
So I'm going to go ahead and leave that out. And then the source for page uh, for that, let's, let's see if this will get us close to the version nine. And so if I go to files in here, and then I go to RDP classifier training data, and then scroll down, I see that I've got that file here, right? So this was the training set six from April of 2010. I'll go ahead and maybe right click on this. So copy link address, and then I will plop that into the SourceForge page. So I'll go ahead and save, and then let's go ahead to our console, and I'm gonna go ahead and do document, okay? And so that wrote the train set nine RDP uh, file and deleted the train set 19 DB and DF files. And so if I do question mark train set nine PDS, I get the right thing. And that looks pretty good, although this number is wrong, right? So we need to go ahead and fix that back here. Um, yeah, so I had 24642. So that's gonna be the 9665 plus the 384. So that's 10049. We want everything to look good, right? So we'll go ahead and save that. We'll redo document and then recheck the train set. And that looks good. Um, and what I'm noticing is that it's leaving out a lot of stuff uh, for use with the, and then it falls off. And so that's because it's forgetting the Roxygen tag, which needs this apostrophe after the pound sign. So we'll go ahead and update that and then document, and then let's look at the help. And there's more information. Very good. Okay, so that looks good and has all the stuff we want. I think we're in pretty good shape for transferring over to train set nine versus train set 19. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and commit my changes. I could do that up here in Git, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep with using the console. So I'll do Git status to see all of the files that have been changed or renamed. Um, I think all of these want to um, get incorporated. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and do git add period. Generally, I try to be very careful about using git add period because that will add everything, right? And sometimes, as we saw a couple episodes ago, you might commit something you didn't really mean to commit because it's, it's so big. So again, if we do git status, that looks good. And actually that is reminding me that I should build it <laughs> before I actually file the commit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the check to make sure that there aren't any error messages building the package because I have this data included. All right, I'm glad I checked because it says I have undocumented code objects, train set 19 DF and data sets. So if I go ahead and do shift command F, this allows me to search across the entire uh, package and so I'll plop that in there and say find. And so in my vignette.r in my benchmarking directory, I have it. That seems weird uh, that that should be a problem. And so that's an undocumented data set. So if I had to guess, if I come to my files tab into data, yep, I still have the train set 19 DF RDA. So let's go ahead and remove that. And again, we saw this before, we could do get rm data, um, train set 19 DF RDA. Let's do that. And now if we recheck, hopefully that warning message will go away. Wonderful, that ran through without any errors or warnings or notes. We're in good shape. I'm gonna come back and try to finish committing this change. I'll do again, get status. Everything is added and ready to be committed. And then I'll do get commit hyphen M. And then I'll say revert. Uh, train set version to nine. All right, that is good. And now if we do get status, we'll see that everything is up to date and we're one commit ahead of what I already have up on GitHub. And we'll save that for the end of the episode. All right, so let's come back to our vignette now. And you'll recall that we have all this code, right? I mean, it's not a lot of code, but it's some. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and instead of DF, maybe what I'll use would be PDS. So this is my version of the train set. And actually I want train set nine, not 19. And so I'll go ahead and load the package to make sure it's all good. Load that back to Dali sequence. The number of bootstraps I wanna do, 
the KMER size, and then we'll build the database. We'll then generate the consensus. And if we look at consensus, so what we see is that the taxonomy goes out to the genus level of Barnziella. But when we look at the confidence, um, the last confidence that's above 0.8 is in the fifth spot, which is a Porphyrmonodaceae. And so that's the consensus. And then the filtered version is this filtered taxonomy, which again, removes anything below 8.8 .8 in confidence, right? And then if I print out the, the taxonomy, we get this, where we have this Porphyrmonodaceae um, in quotes, underscore unclassified. And I'm not gonna change this right now, but what I'm noticing is that we have quotes in the names. And I think the quotes are meant to indicate that it's perhaps not a real name, um, but this is something that I would probably want to remove um, in future refactoring. So I'm not gonna do that right now, but I will make a note of this and come back to it later. So again, this is our vignette.r script. And what we'd like to do is make an actual vignette that can be used with R. You might be asking, what is a vignette? Well, if you come to the CRAN website and look for your favorite package, here is the web page, for example, of dplyr, right? And so there's a lot of information here about like what, what it imports, what it suggests. A lot of the stuff comes from the description file that we have in the project root directory for our phylotyper. Down here, you will see a vignette section, right? And so if I look at introduction to dplyr, this gives me um, a bit of information about working with dplyr, some data that's accessible, various verbs, functions that come with uh, dplyr, and kind of a, a brief tutorial on how to use dplyr. There's a variety of other vignettes in here as well. And so basically what we want is an introduction to phylotyper vignette. And so that's what we're gonna do in the remainder of today's episode. So to do that, we're gonna use a tool from use this. So we'll say use vignette. And then what I'm gonna name it is phylotyper.rmd. And so we'll see in a future episode when we build the website for this package, that if we have a vignette, that has the name of the package we're generating, that that will create a special link um, on the banner across the top of the web page to get to this specific vignette article. So it's complaining that phylotyper.rmd is not a valid file name for a vignette. It might must start with a letter, it does, contain only letters, numbers, underscores, and hyphens. I have a period in there, so I think it doesn't want that extension. So I'll do use vignette phylotyper. All right, so let's open up the console to see what all it did. So it add an editor to the suggest field in description. So let's, let's look at some of this stuff because I think that's helpful to understand what's going on under the hood. And so again, in description, under suggests, we have knitter in our markdown as it suggests here. It adds knitter to vignette builder, which I think is gonna be at the bottom here. Yep, right there. It creates an inst slash doc um, directory. So I'm not seeing it, but it's added it to the git ignore file um, and it created a vignettes directory, right? Um, all right, and then it adds .html .r to vignettes that .git ignore, right? So what this means is that if there's a file within the vignettes directory, so this directory here, that it's got its own special rules for things to ignore, and that it will ignore an HTML file and a .r file. It's good to see what's going on there. Now let's look at phylotyper.rmd. So a couple of things that I wanna orient you to is that at the top of this file, within the three hyphens, is what's called the header or the YAML material. It contains metadata that provides some information about the content and format of the R Markdown document, but mostly tells Knitter how to render this R Markdown file into HTML. It also has the title of the vignette, you could also add the author and the date, but the R Packages book from Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan suggests not messing with that if you don't have to. So this can be largely left untouched. There's another chunk of code here that we don't need to mess with. And then there's another chunk of code here that runs library phylotyper. And so basically what that means is that when this RMD file is rendered, it's going to load our phylotyper package before doing anything else. And so I recall that I had a library function at the top of my vignette for dplyr. But now looking through this, I don't think I actually use dplyr. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, right? And so what we'd like to do is go ahead and um, let's create another code chunk. And so you can create a code chunk um, by using three backticks um, and then curly braces R and then three more backticks. 
And so in that code chunk, I'm gonna go ahead and copy all this code and I will then paste it into here. And I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit because I don't think I use number of bootstraps. Oh, I do here, but the default for classify sequence is already 100 and the Kmer size by default is eight. And so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that because this is really the getting started, kind of the tutorial to tell our users how they might go about using this tool in the simplest possible way. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna go ahead and knit it. So it's complaining that train set nine PDS is not found, which is right there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and install it because I don't think I installed it after I built it um, using check. So let's go ahead and install it. Um, and I'll go ahead and do a clean and install since it's been a while since I've done that. And so it looks like it did that library phylotyper for me again. I'm gonna go ahead and re-knit it and hopefully it works fine this time. Very good, that went through. This window pops up showing uh, the basics of the commands. And that all looks pretty good. So I think the next thing I'll do is go ahead and add some text around this. You don't wanna watch me type. So I'm gonna go ahead and add text to tell people how to use these functions and how they all fit together. This will at least be a first draft that we can package with the package. So I went in and added a fair amount of text. I created some organization to the vignette. So the first section is getting started with Phylotyper. You'll see I have instructions on installing the package as well as loading the package with library. You'll see also for purposes of the vignette, I've also included dplyr and per. I actually don't use dplyr, so I'm gonna remove that. Um, also, as I instruct users here, I have them set the seed for the random number generator. And you recall that the algorithm makes use of a bootstrapping procedure that can produce variable results from run to run if you're using a different seed. So I don't care what seed you use, but you should use a seed. And so that's there. The next section is building the database using build Kamer database as shown here. Um, you'll notice that I also took out some of the default parameters. Um, I feel like that's a distraction and potentially um, a bit of a nuisance. I have never used anything other than eight nucleotides when I have used this algorithm. So I don't know why anybody really would. So while you could do it, I don't feel like I really need to advertise it so broadly or so easily for how to change that. The next section then is how to classify an unknown sequence. And so I give them an unknown. Before I called this bacteroidales, now it's called unknown. We then go through classifying that. Again, I removed the, um, the Kamer size as well as the number of bootstraps. And notice I have a misspelling here, get that fixed. Um, and then I output the consensus to show them what it looks like. And then I go ahead and filter it, describing um, that 80%. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put this as 80% and, and save that. Um, and then I kind of describe what they should be seeing in this result versus what they had up here in consensus. The other reason to set the seed is because as it turns out, and we saw previously, that if you run this multiple times, you will get different confidence scores um, around 80% for the Porphyrmonidaceae. And so when I ran it for you before and with this random number generator seed, the confidence score for Porphyrmonidaceae is in like the 70% the or so. Uh, but if you do it other times, it might be 84%. And so then I output it as a, um, a, a string, right? And so then I have a section here for more advanced topics, like classifying multiple sequences at once. Rarely do people only have one sequence. Usually we might have millions, right? Or at least thousands. And so here is the same sequence replicated three times. And um, I then show how you would go about classifying those three sequences. And this is using map chr from the per package, which we loaded previously. Um, and so here I have a brief description about the variation. Um, and maybe here I'll say something, I'll make another subsection. So you can make subsections with these pound symbols. And here I'll say run to run variation. So I'll say to get a more stable classification, you should be setting your random number generator seed with set seed to get a more precise confidence score you could set that and so this is misspelled and then i think i had another misspelling somewhere 
And maybe this should be 80% rather than 0.8. Oh, and I remember I had a back tick there instead of a quote. Okay. So again, showing how to do that. And then I also have a section here that I'll have to flesh out later as we add more uh, data packages uh, to the repositories. And so that is there to show people how they would go about getting um, that data, okay? Let's go ahead and knit it, and then I'll talk about some of the other stuff I did. So I'll go ahead and knit that. And as we've seen, that opens this window, and this looks kind of like the web page we saw up on CRAN. And it's again, converted all that uh, information that's in the R Markdown document into Markdown, and it went ahead and ran it. And so you can see here, the consensus output. And so you'll notice, for example, that the Porfimona Dacier is 0.79, that's below 0.8. Um, and so we'll want to go ahead and um, filter that out, which we do here. And one thing I've noticed is that in some places I represent the confidence score as a fraction, so like 0.79, and in other places I have it as a percent, like 80%, right? And so I wanna be consistent because I think that's confusing, <laughs> right? Um, and so we then filter the taxonomy to get rid of things below that 0.8, good. And then here we output the taxonomy as a string. And again, here um, we have the confidence scores as percentages rather than fractions. Of course, also, as I mentioned before, we have quotes within the names, which is not ideal, All right? And then um, again, as I showed you with uh, using per map CHR to classify three unknowns. And you can see um, that same sequence repeated three times that we get uh, different classifications at the family level, again, basically based on uh, the iteration or the random number generator seed. And so then I talked about this run to run variation, which we've already seen that we can increase the number of bootstraps to a thousand. And this then gives us greater precision um, for our Porfimona Dacier. And so you know, it seems like, yeah, it, it actually is a Porphymonodaceae rather than a Bactroidales. The trade-off, of course, then, as I say here, is that it's 10 times slower. And then I have the section, as I already showed you, for these alternative databases. So I think this looks pretty good. One thing I wanted to show you is that in our project repository, we have an issue tracker. And so as I was going through this exercise of making the R Markdown document for the vignette, I noticed a number of problems including that some taxa have quotes in their names. So I left myself a note here. So I'll come back and resolve this issue in a future episode. And then also this issue with fractional versus uh, percentage, right? And so I need to add a comment here because this is something I noticed that it appears that uh, classify sequence is outputting fractions, but print is outputting percentages. And I think this was print sequence, print taxonomy, okay. And print taxonomy, all right, so that'll be good. And kind of a, a paper trail, if you will, of things to remind me that I need to come back and look at. And by the way, if you notice any other issues with the code, feel free to contribute an issue and I will show you how I use my issue tracker to resolve these problems in a future episode. Okay, so. We've got that. I'm pretty happy with how this vignette looks. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my vignette.r script because I've got my phylotyper.rmd vignette. So I'll go ahead and do git rm benchmarking vignette.r. And it says the following file has a local modification. Um, use hyphen f to force removal. So I don't care about that change because I updated it already in this phylotyper.rmd file. I'll go ahead and close that. And then again, we look at what has been changed. We see all this. Um, I wanna see what's in my description file. So I'll do git diff on description. So I think I wanna add per to that, but I'm not totally sure. I'm gonna go ahead and check it, uh, to check the package and see if it throws me an error about using per um, without it being in the suggest field of my description file. All right, so it is complaining about the unstated dependency in the vignette. I'm gonna see if I can resolve that by adding it to suggests within description. And so, yeah, here we'll put per, save that and let's go ahead and check it again. That did the trick. No errors, no warnings, no notes. And we see here that it sure enough built those vignettes without any problems. So I'm gonna come over to this more tab and then do build source package 
to build it as it would appear if you were installing from source so we can see the vignette in its HTML format. So that wrote a Philotyper file to my desktop. Go ahead and double click on that. It creates Philotyper 2 because there's already a Philotyper directory. And so if we look at inst doc, you'll then see my Philotyper HTML file. I get my vignette pretty much as I saw it within our studio. I'm pretty happy with how this looks, especially for a first draft. Uh, let's go ahead and commit. We'll go ahead and get status and get add everything because all that stuff is what I want. Do another get status. That's all good. And we'll do git commit dash m create a first draft of package vignette. And now it's gonna be up on GitHub. So if you wanna play with this package, you could go up to GitHub using the dev tools install underscore GitHub to file a typer and you could get your own version before it's up on CRAN. Trust me, we are working towards getting this up on CRAN, but these things take time. It's also the summer. I've only been putting out one video a week because I've had other stuff going on. Appreciate your patience if this seems kind of like slowly rolling through the summer, but I think there's a lot of good stuff we're going over here, even if you know nothing <laughs> about 16S RNA gene sequences and classifying them. In the next episode, we'll come back and we'll continue that march towards getting things ready to post to CRAN. So <laughs> make sure that you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.